Hello everyone and welcome to my messy office. I am filming this video right now. I did not expect to, but this news just dropped and I was in the middle of cleaning this place up or destroying it. Either way, I'm also streaming this video as I make it. So if for some reason something goes weird in it, you know why. Anyway, the big news is that Riot just issued a competitive ruling against uh, Cloud9. Uh, the high level is Cloud9 issued seven players equity grants in the form of RSUs in violation of league rules. So uh, just to give you uh, a quick rundown, get you interested, uh, they're going to get fined uh, $25,000 per player for a total of 175000 And then at the end here, we'll get to a point where it turns out that they could end up paying out somewhere between $330,000 uh, to $605,000, depending on how things go. Anyway, a lot of people have been talking about this on Reddit since the news dropped about, I don't know, an hour ago. So I'm going to go through it and try to explain as best that I can. I'd heard rumblings about this uh, for the past couple of days. Uh, apparently, a lot of it came out during the offseason stuff as players or teams were looking at picking up uh, Cloud9 players, and it became apparent that some of them seemingly had equity stuff in their contract. So uh, really quickly, I, there's a link in the description below to the ruling on the Riot website if you want to take a look at that or follow along. So anyway, the too long didn't read up at the top of this is over the course of 16 months, Cloud9 issued equity through its employee stock plan to a total of seven players in violation of league rules. Cloud9 failed to notify the league of the restricted stock units and did not acknowledge them in the contract summary sheets that were provided to the league. Cloud9 is being fined $25,000 per player for a total of $175,000. In addition, Cloud9 shall be required to make payments to certain current and former players in connection with restitution for the stock grants and must negotiate with current players to extinguish existing stock grants, players must have independent representation and connection with these negotiations. So if you break that down, um, so 16 months ago was what, like um, maybe last July or something. Uh, so in, uh, let's say like July of 2018, somewhere in, in the middle, middle of 2018, uh, Cloud9 started to uh, issue equity to its players. Uh, now, the big issue here is you were not allowed to have equity after November 2017. You could not be a player and also have equity. Um, there's a big thing that happened about a month ago or so where Bjergsen was lauded as the first player to ever have equity underneath the new rule set. And uh, this was something specifically that Riot had done uh seemingly with TSM because I heard that like the other owners found out about it right whenever the Bjergsen re-signs with TSM and becomes part owner stuff dropped. But uh, anyway, the whole thing there was like, hey, Bjergsen's the first player to have equity underneath this new thing and you couldn't before, but now we've created a list of very distinct rules. I think some of them are like, you have to have been a player for a team for three years and you have to have uh, a lawyer to make sure, like player must have a lawyer to make sure that they're um, being, you know, represented well in these negotiations and all this stuff. So this news was uh, came out uh, that, you know, Bjergsen was the, the first player to have equity, but blah, blah, blah. turns out that actually Cloud9 players have had equity for at least uh, 16 months. Um, now, in the document, and I might read through some of this at some point in time, they talk a lot about restricted stock units. Uh, I want to explain a little bit high level what they are, because I know a lot of you might not have ever dealt with RSUs is what they're abbreviated as. RSUs are a pretty common thing, especially in tech and video games. Uh, when I worked at Yahoo, for instance, I had RSUs that were given to me as part of my compensation package. The idea is basically like, hey, we're going to give you this much money in salary over the course of this year. And then uh, as part of your contract, like if you we're going to give you, I don't know, uh, let's say 15,000 RSUs, right? Like the shares in the company and you have to figure out what that is worth or anything like that. But they're like, yeah, we give you the first couple thousand the first year. If you stick around for the next year, we're going to give you more. And then the third year, we're going to keep you, we're going to give you a ton more. It's usually a way to keep people to, um, from leaving your company. Uh, you know, at Yahoo, they wanted to retain like engineers and stuff like that. Uh, for startups, also, it's a great way to make sure like a lot of startups issue equity to the people that are working for them because uh, it keeps you like super dedicated. You you might not be paid as well because you know it's a startup, and eventually you're gonna make a ton of money um, if the company gets bought out for a ton of money. So anyway, that's how RSUs are. That's how they work. Usually is a great way of of retaining talent. Anyway, uh, so 
let's go through some of this. So at the very beginning, they say, yep, you couldn't be an owner uh, or have equity in a team prior to November 2017. Uh, they list Reggie and George as people who did this before, but basically like right around the time of franchising, they made it so that you couldn't do this. Now, list last June, the league realized that several teams had signed contract extensions with players um, and not submitted them to the league. I think, you know, you could get fined for this or something like that. And so Riot's like, all right, fucking, we just need to figure this out. So they tell all the teams, like, submit all your, your contracts. We won't penalize you or anything like that. They gave them a week starting what looks like June 21st based off of this article. So basically, like, look, if you've signed any extensions with any of your players, please let us know. Do it during this week. We won't let you, we won't get you in trouble. So during this time, it says several LCS teams provided updated paperwork, paperwork including Cloud9. Cloud9 staff provided an email with 10 documents attached, including contract amendments, summary sheets, and documents labeled as RSUs for several players. None of the amendments, nor any of the summary sheets, reflected the RSU grants and the summary sheets indicated that they're blah, blah, blah. So apparently they submitted, this is a little unclear to me, I think in the way that Riot wrote this, it's unclear to me, but basically Riot sends them some documents that include documents labeled RSUs, but they're not in the summary sheets or uh, the amendments. So basically the way I can kind of feel, look at this is like, they probably submitted these three different types of documents a uh, contract amendment, a summary sheet, which is probably like, okay, here's how this all works. And then some document labeled like RSU. And they were supposed to say, include like the RSU information and some of the other documents and they didn't, but they also did send in the RSU thing. So a little confusing, uh, but seemingly it seems like the documents were maybe not in like the best order or whatever. And then they mentioned that in July, Cloud9 sent an additional document labeled as an RSU. I'm going to check the chat really quickly and make sure. Okay, good. Nobody's screaming at me saying my audio is having issues. Um, so <sighs> League Operations received the June email and processed those changes. So basically, like, they, they, did all, they handled the paperwork. And this is what's really funny. So, well, funny depending on how you look at it. Riot says there was a clerical error. Now, a clerical error is such a great phrase. You can use it for so many things. The existence of the RSU documents should have been highlighted and escalated. As a result of this error, we've revised our workflow, blah, blah, blah. Basically, what it sounds like is Cloud9 submitted all this documentation to Riot in June and said, by the way, some of our guys have equity. And seemingly, for they've had it for like a year at this point in time because it says 16 months ago they started getting it. June would have been, you know, maybe, maybe like 10 or 11 months. So yeah, for the past year, some of our players have had equity. They put it in this like separate document seemingly. They don't list it in like the main documents. And uh, Riot had, I guess, one person reviewing these and they missed it. So this is a pretty big fuck up on Riot's part in my opinion, uh, because Cloud9 literally said, we're actively in violation of the rules by submitting these documents. And now again, complicated the way they did it, but you know, it could have been caught. It could have been caught and seemingly it wasn't. Now, at this point in time, C9 had already seemingly been breaking it, so I don't know. But I just think it's kind of funny that they didn't catch it and looks kind of bad on the right side. So then it says, in mid-August, as part of our uh, league's work on a structure that would allow teams to grant equity, so blah, blah, blah. So basically, in August, they started t figuring out, like, hey, how do we get Bjergsen equity from TSM? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to put it that way, right? But, like, uh, if you look at the Bjergsen deal... Uh, with TSM, they, like Riot has like a list of things that you have to meet, or conditions you have to meet in order to get equity in a team. And it seems pretty specifically designed for like Bjergsen. Like the only thing that they aren't listing on there is like your last name needs to be Bjerg and your first name needs to be Soren. Uh, I think Sneaky might be eligible underneath those rules too. So I'm not just saying it specifically for him. But again, like the, from what I heard, you know, like the Bjergsen deal happened and that was like right around the same time that the other owners got informed about the changes to this equity thing. So I just find it funny, but back to this, you know, Riot's figuring out like, how are we going to, what rule sets is, are we going to make for the way that players gain equity? Uh, and what, who's going to be eligible. And so it says, what's interesting here is like in mid, mid August, as part of the league's work on a structure that would allow teams to grant equity to players in certain limited situations, league operations staff flagged these RSUs for the first time. So I have no idea what that conversation was like, but it seems like it went 
something. I would imagine it with something like this. Hey, uh, Bob, we, uh, we have those, we're going to get, we're going to make this whole thing where players can finally have RSUs or got equity and, um, you know, like it's going to be a big thing. So we need to figure out how we're going to do that. And the other guy goes, wait, I don't understand. Like I looked at those cloud nine documents, uh, about a month or two ago and they already have equity. And then they're like, wait, what? So the next line is the league made the determination to address the RSU grants in the off season as cloud nine was engaged in Europe at worlds through October 18th, shortly after cloud nine's return from worlds, the investigation was prioritized. So again, at the end of it, um, <laughs> at the end of it, like wait, wait, those guys have equity. What? Oh, fuck it. We'll handle it after worlds. Worlds is coming up. We're, we're going to figure it out, uh, after cloud nine goes out in groups. So the thing that is, is super funny about uh, that is they, I just, I think it's funny that then they found out that this was an issue and they're like, we'll handle it after Worlds. I don't know. I think it's strange, but it says shortly after Cloud Nine's return from Worlds, investigation was prioritized. So I'm not like a Riot League Ops person. I'm, it's much more complicated than I'm sure I think it is. I just find the whole process funny. So during the course of the investigation, League staff reviewed all RSUs issued by Cloud9. Uh, full contracts of all the players. So they basically start investigating all this stuff and, and they detail the way in which they did it, including, by the way, um, calendar entries, emails, documents, and stuff. So they do this like really big uh, deep dive and then they they <clears throat> come up with uh, these findings. So let's see, my notes here. So they found that there were, they basically fell into two categories. Um, there were RSUs that were in lieu of salary and those that were gifted RSUs. So seemingly what happened is some, some players and, and the team agreed like, Hey, we're going to make, we're going to take less money or we're going to pay you less money, or I'm going to make less money in exchange. I'm going to get some equity in the team. It's not unusual for uh, that to come up in a negotiation. And then there were also some that were gifted to players. So. Um, I don't know how that lurks, but maybe after, let's say an example, maybe last year after Worlds, Jack said, you guys all did a great job. You made it semis. We're going to give you some equity. I, I have no idea how that works, but the gifted stuff is technically not part of the contract, I, I guess, is the way that that could be perceived. Uh, anyway, it turns out that seven players had equity and only, so Riot highlights this, which I think is really interesting. Only two of the seven players had a lawyer or their representative review the RSU grants. Of the remaining players, none were encouraged or discouraged from having representation and most satisfied themselves through conversations with Cloud9 ownership. So uh, seven players had equity, which is pretty big. <clears throat> Makes you wonder who. And five of those players never talked to a lawyer. Now I want to highlight this because this is just such a, such a testament to how screwed up esports ecosystem is here i'm not trying to put any blame on the team or the players or anybody it's just like it's so fucked that like these contracts are being done without agents or lawyers or anything like that and in this case like rules were being violated uh and contracts that shouldn't have existed were existing and there was no lawyer or anything reviewing it for the players so i just find that disappointing players go get agents and lawyers please i know some of them suck but hopefully you can find some i i can make recommendations um, anyway, so then it says oh, the remaining players then were encouraged or discouraged. So, uh, it's not like cloud nine was saying like, Hey, don't get a lawyer or something like that, or saying, go get a lawyer. Apparently things just went off the way they, they were. And the players and their representatives, it says here, uh, basically they never questioned the RSUs because they're like, well, why would we being offered equity if it was against the rules? So they never thought it was an issue. None of the players flagged it as like, this is confusing. Uh, the big sense paragraph here, which I'm going to read in full during an interview, cloud nine ownership stated that they did not understand that the RSUs were to be against league rules as there were no, uh, there was no prohibition about player equity ownership before franchising. So before franchising, these rules didn't exist. They were unaware of the rule change in response to inquiries about why cloud nine had not provided the information about the RSUs to the league, because again, apparently like there, this was not documented by the league uh, appropriately and Cloud9 hadn't sent it earlier when they were supposed to and the league didn't know about this. Cloud9 stated that the RSUs were not part of the contract process, so day-to-day -day staff may not have had visibility and upper management was not reviewing summary sheets. 
<laughs> and Riot wrote, in other words, the explanation boiled down to the idea that one hand didn't know what the other hand was doing. So this looks, in my opinion, this is where Cloud9 has egg on their face. So I think a couple things here before we get into like the rule violations and the penalties. Uh, you, I think one, Cloud9's defenders will say, well, they just didn't know. Um, they, these rules changed whenever franchising came in and they didn't know. It's not like they were doing anything wrong. And maybe Jack was like trying to hook up his players with RSUs. The other, the Cloud9 detractors will say, Cloud9's excuse was like, oops, we didn't know. Like whenever a police officer pulls you over for speeding and says you were going 80 in a 60 and you said, oh, I didn't know it was a 60 officer. So that's where you're going to see everybody kind of line up, uh, industry people, et cetera, either behind the scenes or publicly, they'll say like, whatever. The other thing that is kind of embarrassing about this from Cloud9's uh, perspective is that Riot sort of saying one hand didn't know what the other hand was doing is kind of calling them out for like your... Your excuse is that your organization isn't as organized as it should have been, that you had people submitting documents to us that didn't know about information they should have known about. Blah. So uh, anyway, I think regardless of if what camp you are in on whether or not you know Cloud9 did this maliciously and knowingly, or if they didn't know and they were ignorant about it, it looks really bad if they didn't know about it because you should know what the rules are and you should follow them. And uh, it also looks bad because they they weren't organized enough to submit like the right documents. So it just it looks unprofessional. Again, though, I would also say Riot not catching it looks unprofessional. I think everyone looks really oh, and the players not having lawyers and agents looks unprofessional. Like this whole thing is just such an embarrassing situation, and I hope everyone learns from it. I'm gonna check the chat again. No one is okay. No one's yelling about audio issues. So uh, Cloud9 submitted a rule violation. So they're citing them for two things. One, they're saying right, Cloud9 submitted inaccurate summary sheets um, and they that didn't represent like the current data. And they're getting them in trouble for actually violating the rules by granting the, the RSU. So it's basically like you broke the rules and you didn't tell us and submitted inaccurate stuff that made it seem like you weren't breaking the rules. So those are the two violations they're getting hit with. Uh, so now it says penalties. Within 30 days, Cloud9 has to do the following. So they're going to fine 25K for each of the players that, uh, sorry, each of the violations of which there were seven, right? Because seven players uh, got the equity. So that's 175K if you do the math. Uh, those fines are justified for failure to make the disclosures and also because of the grant. So again, for those two rules we just talked about. Uh, by the way, this money gets donated to charity. So uh, congratulations to whatever charity it's 175k. Uh, Cloud9 is now... So this is what's super interesting. As specifically directed by the league, Cloud9 is directed to pay certain amounts to players no longer on Cloud9's roster in an aggregate cash amount that compensates those players at prevailing fair market value. Now, the big question is here. So we know that... So nowhere in this document do they say who has the... Who has the equity. Uh, but we do know now that seven players did, and we know that some are no longer with the team. Now, four players got traded to EG. What's interesting is, I suspect that this whole thing was handled before those trades went through. And I have also heard that supposedly, and this is not in this document, but what I've heard, that uh, Jensen was among the people who had equity. So at the very least, it wasn't just players that were that were on the roster this year, that there might have been more as well. So anyway, what's super fascinating is now some of these players who are no longer with Cloud9 get paid out, and it says prevailing fair market value. So they have to figure out what Cloud9 is actually worth, and I think they can use their most recent raise to determine that. And then they pay out that stock essentially. So that's for the players that have left the org. They have to pay them out. Now, uh, Cloud9, the next bullet point here is Cloud9 is directed to either pay certain amounts to players cl currently on Cloud9's roster to cancel the existing RSU grants and or to substitute the RSU grants through renegotiation of their current contracts. The choice belongs to the player. And if the player chooses to negotiate the contract, the league requires them to get a lawyer, agent, or representative. Okay, great. 
news, by the way, that Riot's like, hey, well, I take a step back. So Riot was basically like, there's some players on the team that still have these RSU grants. They either have to get paid out or they have to renegotiate so that they don't have them. So you can, you can go and say, okay, I either want you to pay me, let's say it's like a hundred grand or 200 grand for the stock, the equity that I own in your team. Instead of having you pay me that money, let's renegotiate. And now I want a million dollar a year contract, you know, so that you don't have to do that. So it's up to the player. And by the way, good on Riot for making sure that they have representation or a lawyer or an agent. Again, like I, everyone should have this, by the way, I think some people might perceive me saying, well, don't you trust Jack? Look, you should just, you're in an adversarial relationship. You're negotiating. You should always have representation. The league is advanced enough now. You make enough money. You can get representation. So the final line here is the total fine based on the restitution options provided to Cloud9 is between approximately 330000 to 605000 depending on the option to renegotiate contracts. So Cloud9 will either have to pay out 330000 or as much as 605,000 based off of if players decide to just take the equity thing and not renegotiate or whatever. Uh, so let's sum it all up. Cloud9 gave equity when they weren't supposed to. They claim that they just didn't know they weren't supposed to. They didn't tell Riot about it in the very beginning. They claim that that was because of like a organization issue on their end. Could be true. Uh, I think skeptics will say that they weren't and the defenders will say, well, it's an esports org. It's going to be a mess. I'm going to leave it up for people to decide which of those you believe. Uh, Riot fucked up by not no realizing it whenever they got informed about it because they only had one person reviewing contracts. Behavior now. People who had equity, including some players, that are no longer on the team will now get paid out. I'm guessing some of the players that made it over to EG are included in that. And then the players that are still on C9 now get to also get paid out or renegotiate their contract. So hopefully that explains everything. I apologize if some of this was still kind of arcane. Uh, I What do you guys think? Leave me a comment in the YouTube comments to tell me what you think. No, I, I hope this explains it um, because I know this stuff can be kind of arcane. And quite frankly, sometimes I wonder if it's intentionally arcane so that people don't look too much into it. Um, but anyway, that's been the video. Be sure to uh, subscribe and stay tuned for more off-season content. Also, alienware.com slash Travis. There's a link in the video description. I don't have an outro for this because I'm rushing it out.